In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Happy Theophany. Um, today we celebrate the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ at the hands of St. John the Baptist, who was the forerunner who came before him to prepare the way for him. And in this miracle that we celebrate today, the Lord showed us the benefits and the importance and the necessity of baptism and what does it mean for us as believers to begin our spiritual walk with God through the sacrament of baptism. We read in John 1.33, it says, He who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. That St. John the Baptist, the baptism that he could baptize with was simply the baptism of water. It was not a sacramental baptism. But that the Lord Jesus Christ himself is the one who instituted the sacrament of baptism um, through the baptizing of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to speak very briefly about four of the benefits of baptism. The first one is that the scripture says that we put on the new man, that we become a new nature. The second is the forgiveness of sins. The third is becoming members of the body of Christ. And the fourth is becoming um, children of God. First, what does the scripture say about the new man? In the new man, we, we, we put on Christ and we have righteousness and holiness, which are his characteristics bestowed upon us. In Ephesians 4.24, it says, Put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. This new man that we put on, which is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, is what allows us to be sanctified and to live a life of Christian faith. When the, if you look at the commands that the Lord actually commands us to do, they, they, they are beyond the human nature. They're beyond the, the amount of love that God wants us to have for one another, the amount of forgiveness that God wants us to forgive one another, the humility, the submission, all the things that God commands us as Christians to obey him in faith without even fully understanding, without having all of our questions answered. All these things that are contrary to our nature, God grants us in this mystery of baptism to have this spirit of himself in us that we can then be sanctified and we can live according to his commandments in a way that is pleasing to him and a way that transcends the world. When St. Paul speaks about the difference between the carnal man and the natural man and the spiritual man. These are like three categories of people. The carnal man is the person who lives only for their flesh, for, for, their, for their pleasure, for their desires. The natural man is what we would consider to be in the world a good person. Maybe someone who doesn't harm others, but also is living for themselves and is living only in the material world, having no understanding of the spiritual world or, the, or eternal life. Whereas the spiritual man, which is the person whom God wants us to become, is a person who sees beyond the world, who doesn't, is not attached to the things of the world, is not attracted to the lusts of the world, but sees the world of God in a, in a different light, sees the world differently. We achieve, we achieve this through, the first step of it is through baptism, that we begin to have our eyes open and to see the world as it really is. The second aspect of the new man is he speaks about how this putting on the new man is necessary for our salvation. In John 3, verse 5, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Meaning that our original nature, prior to baptism, is unworthy to enter the kingdom of God because of its corruption, because of its wickedness, because of its darkness. This is the state that actually we were born. It always strikes me in the baptism prayers, even when praying the baptism on a small innocent child, that part of the things that the priest says is when you were born, you, was, you were a slave, not free. But now after the baptism, you have become free. Like this, this, this child that when we look at is innocent, what sin is it that this young child has committed? And yet in the eyes of God, all human beings born into this world are born as slaves, are born in darkness. And it is through baptism that we are liberated, that we are set free, that we are able to be pleasing in the sight of God. So this is necessary for our salvation. Also through baptism, the heaven is open. In Luke 3.21, it says, When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized, and while he prayed, the heaven was open. We know that in this feast of the theophany that we celebrate when the lord was baptized the heavens were open and 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 people could see that this this was a miracle that was happening this is preparing the way for us when we are baptized that the heaven is open for us the heaven the heavens are ready and prepared to receive us to our everlasting home and all of this begins with this mystery of baptism that we receive the second benefit of baptism is the forgiveness of sins in acts 238 
when, um, when Peter was preaching after the, the Pentecost, he says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Also, Ananias, which was the, the man that St. Paul went to after his conversion, it says what? And now, when, uh, Ananias is speaking to Paul, And now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. The idea that in baptism, it is not just a cleansing of the body, but it's a cleansing of the soul. That all of the sins we committed, including the original sin that we were born with, and whatever sins that we committed in our life, are completely wiped away, and we start again completely new, completely fresh, with nothing that we carry along with us from the old life. All of our actions, all of our thoughts, all of our wrong deeds, all of our, 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 our wrong intentions, everything that we did from before this day is completely wiped away. And of course, we know that baptism is not the only sacrament that does this. This is why after we are baptized, we continue in the sacrament of confession, which does the same thing. For those people who are already believers, having already been baptized, it is someone who is cleansed through the, the sacrament of confession. But the first time, we are sac sanctified through the baptism, uh, the sacrament of baptism. And even in the, creed, in the creed, we say we believe in one baptism for the remission of sins. So it is through baptism that we receive forgiveness of sins. The third benefit of baptism is that we become members of the body of Christ. In Romans 6, verse 5, it says, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, which is in baptism, certainly we also will be in the likeness of his resurrection. So being united in his death and being united in his resurrection, that just as we are sacrificed with him in his death on the cross, so also we gain the benefit of the resurrection, just as he also was resurrected um, after, after he, he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, so also Christ is promising us the same, that when we are in his body, that we are his body and part of him, then whatever it is that he experiences, we also experience. This is why we call Christ the first fruit. Meaning, in every way, Christ on earth experienced everything that as a human being we experience, and so everything he experiences, we also experience. So because we are in his body, that when he rises from the dead, we also rise from the dead. When he dies, we also die. And how is this accomplished? Because we can't physically go back in time and get up on the cross with him and die on the cross. And we can't physically go into the tomb and resurrect with him. So this sacrament of baptism is the means by which that we actually can die with him on the cross and that we can be resurrected with him as he was resurrected. Also, as members of the body of Christ, we receive a newness of life because we are, we are in the body of Christ. We are not in, in, in our own corrupted body. We receive new life from this body that we become a part of. It says in Romans 6 also, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. This new life, that just as the Lord lived in compassion and mercy and love and all the characteristics and virtues that he had, so also through baptism we become one with him, we begin to walk also in those same very things. Also, we are united with, e with each other, because when all of us as believers are united together with Christ, then that means also we are united with one another. In 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. So the, 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 the mystery of baptism is not just about my individual relationship with God or my individual salvation, but it is a way of uniting all of the believers into the same body of Christ for the salvation of the church as a whole, in addition to me as an individual. So we become connected to one another in a very mystical way, in a very mysterious spiritual way through baptism. That when we are all baptized, we are connected together through the body of Christ himself. Also, we become temples of God because we are, the Holy Spirit is now able to live inside of us as temples of God living in us. In 2 Corinthians 6, St. Paul says, for you are the temple of the living God. How is it that this happens? How is it that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us? He comes and dwells in us because we have been baptized and, and, and we have become um, temples of the living God. The last benefit I'm going to mention quickly about baptism is it allows us actually to become children of God, not just servants of God, not just human beings that are the creation of God, but even to the, to the level of being children, becoming heirs with Christ. Because when we put on Christ, then it's like when God the Father looks at us, instead of seeing 
human beings that have committed sin or human beings that were, were corrupted. It's like the God, the Father, he sees Christ himself. This is what it means when we say we put on Christ, that God the Father treats us just like Christ. God the Father teaches just like his son. So we become sons and daughters of God, just as the Lord Jesus Christ obviously is the son of God. And Romans 8 says, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. How is it that we can call God the Father? And what means is God the Father? We maybe take lightly the idea that we speak about God and we say our Father. Why is it that he is our Father? He is our Father because we are his children and we are his children because he adopted us to be his children through the mystery of baptism. That is in baptism we become children of God. Sometimes we use this word children of God lightly and sometimes we say that all, humanities are the, all of humanity is the children of God. It's actually not, not right. The, those people who have, who have consented to die and resurrect with the Lord, have, who have been adopted by God to be his sons and daughters, are the ones that can say, Abba, Father, are the ones whom actually are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs because we are inheriting. We are inheriting eternity. Just as Christ inherited eternity, and, and God said about him that, that he would put his f enemies at his footstool and that he would sit in, on the throne in heaven. So also we are inheriting as the children of God, we are inheriting heaven. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So the work of salvation is that in everything that we do, we do it with Christ. If Christ is on the cross, we are on the cross with him. If Christ is resurrected, we resurrect with him. If Christ is, is, is in his glory and powerful, he also grants us this glory and this power. And if Christ is humiliated, if he is ashamed, if he is suffering, we also suffer with him. So to consent to live the life of Christ and to be with Christ in every phase of his life and that all of these characteristics are manifested in us, this is what it means to have salvation, that we allow ourselves to live the life that Christ lived with him, and this all begins with baptism, that in baptism we become one with him, and everything that happens to him happens to us. Of course, it doesn't happen exactly the same way, but we allow it to happen. We consent for it to happen. We choose to do this. We choose to suffer with him. We choose to die with him, and we choose to resurrect with him, and this is the mystery of baptism that is the first step in our Christian life, in our, in our life in the church, and the life of salvation that leads ultimately to our inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. This is why this is such a great celebration and a great feast, and why we always look to the baptism of Christ that opened the heavens, and it also opens the heavens for us. And glory be to God forever. Amen.